everybody, and welcome to tonight's show. I am glad to be here because, boy, is there a lot of hustle and bustle out there with the holidays going on. But one thing that is spinning smooth, and that is your double groove down here at the Hookup on Music. We've got a lot of lot of cool stuff to cover tonight. Um, a little a little more something holidays, but uh, a lot more just just rock just fun, just a lot of good times, and I'm glad I can share them here with you tonight. Um, You're exactly, during this time of the season, who I would rather be spending all of my time with because, well, you guys make, make me smile because we always get to talk about music. We always get to talk about all of the goodies that are out there in the world of music, and I appreciate you always tuning in. My name is Tony. Okay, and let's 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 fire up our amps. Let's let's get rocking. Okay. Um this week there has been a lot a lot a lot of different holiday music, lots of different places that I go. Um not sure if I'm, I'm I I do enjoy some, um some I do not. Um I don't know if I enjoy it all the time. Some people enjoy those stations that play all of all of the Christmas music. I like it in in turns so uh, some some stations that i listen to or some things that i spin i work them in there a little bit of here and a little bit of there um also been working in and is um gonna start talking about my my got this huge fill to the brim concert ticket booklet here and and today i was gonna take a look at and see what what's a concert i that that i got in here that, that's really pretty close to um well the date we we're at and that's I got one here, January 4th, 2000, okay, it's Metallica at the newly named Allstate Arena, okay, it's right when it switches from the Rosemont to the Allstate Arena, and Metallica has just released that, that S&M album, um, Symphony and Metallica, No Leaf Clover is a pretty good track on there, um, opening the show, okay, it was Seven Dust, really, really awesome. And uh, the unfortunate musings of Kid Rock. Um, you know, you might like Kid Rock out there. Um, at the time, his Ba with the Ba was was all over the radio station. And his Cowboy was also being played. Um, don't know really how I ever felt about him. Um, recently, I, I've probably disliked him more. But uh, that being said, it was a show. And it was really, really cool. We were really right up against the railings. And Metallica delivered, okay? Metallica delivered. Um, the first time I saw Metallica in 1997, they were like in the center of the um, Rosemont Horizon slash Allstate Arena. But this time they were against one side, which um, allowed for lots of moshing. And it, it was it was cool. It was awesome. You could feel that 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 that, that wintertime spirit there into the uh, stadium. But uh, maybe you were at that show if you were reach out let me know how you thought of it um but we'll continue you know every now and then and we'll share some concert experiences from that that concert booklet that i just showed you but uh tonight uh getting started real estate heard this brand new song um that i just heard um water underground if you do get a chance please check out this song brand brand new gonna be on their their new album called daniel okay which will be out february 23rd still a couple months away but real estate is this band's name and real estate i i enjoy their work okay I, you can't really say that real estate is new okay but they do um what's the word i'm looking for um they they have they've been around since 2009 but uh, maybe they're new to some people who are just coming into their um, into their psyche. I mean, debut album, really, really good. Self-titled uh, third album, Atlas, really, really good. Um, second album, Days, good too. Um, I went through all of these for the show here. And, um, you know, in mind, the fourth album, um, definitely really, really cool. Okay. The fourth album was the first album since... Um, you know, since it's since since just just a lot of changes in the band. Okay, Matt Mondelli left the band. Okay, which when any time we talk about it all the time on here, when Matt Mondelli left the band, um, 
what kind of who 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 is is taking his place but you know what um martin courtney is really a really uh really good and i think this water underground song if you could get a chance to to spin that um it's got that jangly guitar that we love here we love the jangly guitar um but a band a band that is is got sounds a band that that is definitely i would deem them to be really cool and i deem them that you should take a listen to them because you know why not um start with water underground work your way backwards okay um work your way the last album before daniel comes out was the main thing um a really really good song um good song on the album was the main thing was the title track but paper cup was good too um so was the shallow sun and sting but Go ahead and, and take a listen to those guys and tell us what you think. They're called Real Estate. The new album will be out in February. It is called um, Daniel. Um, it's going to be, I think, really good if it's any indication of what uh, the rest of it sounds like, if it sounds like Water Underground. So check that out. Um, we're back a little bit here. Um, just to get started here, um, we have mentioned before in a lot of different places, um, Greg Lake had a song, not to be confused that it was um, Emerson Lake and Palmer, but it was Greg Lake had this song. Um, you might have heard of it. It's a lot of people seem to believe that it had something to do with Christmas. I remember one Christmas morning, a winter's light and the distance. You might have heard that song again. Um, you might not have. I'm not really sure. But if you haven't, check it out. It's um, Greg Lake. I believe in Father Christmas. Not by Emerson Lake and Palmer. It's just by Greg Lake himself. It is often, unfortunately, characterized as a Christmas song. But uh, Lake did not intend for this to happen. He um, intended for the song to be kind of a little bit uh, protest against Christmas because of the commercialization that uh, Christmas sometimes poses. Um, if you listen to the song, it, it, it's, it sounds like it's Christmas. So I don't know what Greg was thinking if he didn't want it to be Christmas, but he decided that, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and have this song released in November. I don't want it to be about Christmas, but we'll just, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know? Um, a lot of people, though, I mean, the, the video itself, I guess maybe if you're watching the video, it's shot in Egypt. There isn't, you know, um, snow um, in the video that, that leads to Christmas. The lyrics just sound very, very, very Christmassy. Um, the song's been covered by other artists. Robbie Williams has covered the song. Um, Marilyn has uh, covered the song, which we'll get to them in a little in a little bit. Um, just, just, just Vertical Horizon. Wow, um, everything you want is uh, covering this song, Cl classic. Um, Greg Lake wrote that uh, about the song that uh, you tell experience that it's lovely to get the old royalty check around September every year, but on its own, the Christmas song money isn't quite enough by, to buy its own island in the Caribbean. So he, is, he has benefited from this um, song. Um, upon release, it was only in the U.S. up to 95, but um, we brought up Greg Lake. So uh, my idea is, is let's 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 dig into some of these the, the, these prog rock bands and let, let's see what you think. I mean, I think if we're talking about um, definitely prog bands, a lot of these, if you're looking at the screen, who I would deem some of the best, you know, Rush, Journey. Um, original journey before steve perry before he was part of the band they were really really proggy um genesis king crimson um asia moody blues has got some stuff um emerson lake and palmer you know where that's that's who um greg lake was a part of was emerson lake and palmer i think that's how why sometimes little people get confused at um why that would be he would it would be that band but it was not that band Really, really good stuff. It's always good to hear a little bit of uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer and talk about Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Okay, Keith Emerson, Greg Lake, and Carl Palmer, a three-piece. Um, that was Carnival number nine right there. A really, really good piece of music that I think is 
some of their best. And I think, honestly, as as, as a band who is only a three piece, when you listen to a lot of these uh, prog bands, we're going to get talk to Rush a little bit. They sell a lot more than just three people. And you know what? When you could got could fill out the sound like that, you got to say to yourself, "You're a really, really, really good band." And that's what Emerson, Lake, and Palmer were. They were a really, really, really good band. Um, you know, and and just that name, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, um, definitely um, it, 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 more, more, more. I want to know more. You know, listen to albums, Tarkus, okay, Brain Salad, Surgery are definitely going to bring you around to hear more of who they actually are. The song In the Beginning is definitely one that uh, I remember very, very young hearing. It's not definitely their most progged out song, but there is a really awesome keyboard a solo by one um, Keith Emerson, who, wow, could he play the keyboard? And the rest of the guys, Carl Palmer, he could play the drums. And, you know, Greg Lake had a voice, okay? Greg Lake was part of another really awesome band that we're going to talk about in a little bit called um, King Crimson, but... You know, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer were a band that, uh, for me, you know, growing up in the house that I grew up in, um, were, were a band that, were, you know, were talked about as being really, really good, you know? Original incarnation from 70 to 79. Um, put out a lot of good work. Go back. Go in there to check it out. Um, yes. Okay. We we love Yes. Um, I, there's so many different sounds in Yes. You can't, I can't personally pigeonhole them as, as one kind of progressive sound, but the, just just the all-around um, presentation of Yes is what I would deem as something that is really, really awesome. You know, good people turn their heads to stay so satisfied I'm on my way. When I first heard that song right there, um, I've seen all good people, another indication of a band at the beginning of their career. Um it, it drew me in, you know, the song has different sounds and different song um, signatures um, of time in their playing. And that's exactly what I believe. Yes. Was, was amazing at their, 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 their signatures. There are known for quite a few lineup changes, but uh, some of the players that have been in their band, I mean, just bringing up Bill Bruford on drums is, is, is just, just an amazing, amazing, amazing player. Um, Chris Squire, um, there's nothing more to say than his bass sound in general. Um, John Anderson's vocals, really, 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 really awesome. Rick Wakeman, um, you know, again, more magical keyboards. I mean, a lot of this prog needs to have that magical keyboard. And if it does not have the magical keyboard, it just will not be what I deem as successful as, well, a success should be. And, um, you know, and I think Yes has always um, had that. It, through their albums, though, a lot of different sounds, okay? The, um, I've seen all good people from the Yes album. is sounds a lot different than Fragile. Uh, Close to the Edge, who a lot seems to um, believe is their best, best album. And the last um, by Bill Bruford, um, definitely one that is up there. If you got some time, though, go through that late 70s stuff, uh, um, going for the one is is, is solid. Um, drama is definitely unique in the fact that it has Trevor Horn on lead vocals from the Bugles. Video killed the radio star. Um, only one album made with him, um, but also also with him was uh, Jeff Downs on keyboard. Um, and then uh, 90125 is pretty much bo- boosts them right back to the top and of course, we all know Owner of a Lonely Heart, but changes on that album is is definitely a rocking cut that I think it needs to be more um, recognized by people who who like good music. Um, yes, in general, um, lots of sounds, lots of workings. Um, unfortunately, if you're going to see them now, a lot of the people that I mentioned are no longer in the band. Um, Steve Howe, guitar player, is the only member who has been around um, from the beginning, who still plays with them. And, you know, that's that's their choice. Um, if you have a chance to see probably anybody, um, you know, why not? Why not go check them out? Always um, big stands for Yes here. Uh, love, love the um, Yes. Um, I, I think just, but again, a band who's gone through as many changes as they have. Um, 
you know, definitely could leave some people leave, leading, you know, who is this band? Who are their identity? Um, neighbor across the street growing up, I was like three, four, five, or six. The dad, first guy I really remember to have compact discs, CDs. Um, he had the whole Yes collection on CD. Really, really remember seeing that. It's probably one of the first things that I remember. Um, this one was not welcomed into my home. My uh, dad did not like Yes. But uh, that being said, awesome, good stuff. Really, really worth uh, checking in and getting into. Um, Rush, not much more to say than Rush. I mean, Getty Lee, Alex Lifeson, and Neil Pert are definitely are there. And I, I've used this opportunity to really play you a clip that I've wanted to uh, share for a while here. And it's, uh, well, let's take a look at a little Mr. Neil Pert. Love that Neil Pert. Um, love that song, The Weapon. Um, really, really, really good, 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 good song from Signals. Check that out. If you have not the full song, it's 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 longer than six minutes, which is personal fans of mine in the Prague category and all music categories. But again, Rush, um, different sounds, different incarnations. The 70s is different than the 80s. It's different than the 90s. Um, if you're focusing in on the 70s, a Farewell to Kings and Hemispheres is a really, really good place to take a look at. Um, moving Pictures is always great. End Tracks, Witch Hunt, and Vital Signs is definitely worth your time. Um, signals, like I said, really, really good. Um, I'm all for Rush. There isn't really a category in Rush that I don't enjoy. I think they're just a great all-around band, and I think they, they've worked their butt off throughout their whole entire career to do a lot of cool different things that not a lot of other bands have had the, what I would call the, um, the ability or actually the, the uh, stamina that they did. And the unfortunate passing of Neil Pert, I think um, stopped that, but there's always curios uh, curiosities is of, are they going to do more? Are they going to get back together? Alex and Neil will have to wait and see, but Rush is definitely one that through the spectrum of, of different you know, pieces of entertainment and different pieces of just music. They just, they just appear everywhere. Um, even Getty Lee's got a really, really good solo album that I've seen recently. He has been um, throwing out little pieces here and little pieces there of, you know, extra bonuses and, and, and a little bit of reissues. But, you know, I'm never too shy to take some time to listen to a little bit of Rush. And I don't think anybody else should be, especially if you like, you know, that rock um definitely <clears throat> heavy you know there's some songs that are really heavier than others and you know and i think that's what makes rush really awesome genesis okay we could spend a whole episode talking about genesis and i'm sure one day we will because genesis is just that type of band the type of band that could take up a whole entire hours and hours and hours and hours but uh just to say that they're one of the most important bands, and not only in just music history, based upon the players in the band. Um, everybody knows Mr. Phil Collins is from Genesis, and, and well, if you don't, Peter Gabriel got his career started in there, but the other players in the band also need to be known. Um, you know, um, Tony Banks and Mike Rutherford, I think, are equals to both Peter and Phil in the regards of just the amount of awesome music that they've been able to put together together, uh, put together together, put together, um, you know, and that's what I think makes them an awesome band. <laughs> You know, a band where, again, you're replacing Peter Gabriel with Phil Collins and being able to just say, hey, you know what? This isn't going to be easy, but I think we got what it takes to have that happen. And, and you know, Phil, for all his worth and, and everything, he's also had a solo career that has nothing to do with prog and everything to do with pop and, you know, you know, just making some good songs, you know, of course, with, uh, you know, Philip Bailey of... Um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, just really, 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 really good artists all around. Uh, Mike and the Mechanics, awesome. Um, get a chance, definitely check out, you know, Genesis. I know everyone has checked out Genesis, but the deeper cuts in Genesis's catalog is definitely where maybe I would get started. They got this live album from 73 
um, with Peter on vocals. Really, really awesome. Get them out by Friday. Great, great song. The Knife. Awesome, awesome, awesome song. Watcher of the Skies. Early indications to some maybe later things that maybe sound proggy like Tool. But I, I, I just can never speak enough in the high level of, of amazingness uh, of Genesis. And, and, and if you're watching this picture of Phil on the screen, if that doesn't draw you in, um, I don't know really what, 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 what you're missing um, in that, in that category. Um, King Crimson. Okay. Talk about one of the coolest albums that I've seen is King Crimson in the court of King Crimson. Um, just a great prog band. Okay. But also incorporating elements of classical and jazz and there's some industrial there's experimental there's maybe a little even a little heavy metal lots and lots of different artists have come through this band through the years um bill bruford um from yes spent time in here um greg lake from emerson lake and palmer spent time with king crimson um boz burrell from bad company adrian below has had time with with the talking heads just just Lots and lots and lots and awesome, awesome stuff. But Robert Fripp is the man, and he is the main man in King Crimson, appearing on pretty much all of their albums. And, well, he can play the guitar. He also has got this cool little series that I've seen on YouTube with him and his wife, and they cover other songs. But in the court of King Crimson, if you have not checked out that debut album, I think it's a good place to get started. I don't know if it's their best, but if you're looking for something... Um, 24th, 21st century schizoid man is definitely where to get started. And you could also uh, piece a little bit of Greg Lake in there. Um, you know, you could hear where he was going from the Christmas uh, track. Um, but, you know, you know, King Crimson always, always is, is good. And so is Kansas. Kansas is another great band. And I think that they need to be talked about more. Okay. A band that, that, that adds, adds you know, a member that can play the violin and you're rocking as hard as they do. Um, definitely, I think is, is, is something that uh, needs to be, you know, needs to be just all around, you know, talked about violin um, is not played enough in, in music, but their, their first, um, you know, six, six albums, you know, five, six albums, really, really good stuff. Um, like a lot of deep cuts, a lot of good deep cuts on a lot of these songs, um, you know, and that's where I think they, they, they got a lot of bread and butter in that, um, in that kind of, you know, Icarus child of innocence from that third mask album is really, really, really good. Um, but even some of the deeper cuts off of like left overture is, um, really, 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 really awesome. That magnum opus that closes the album. You know, that's eight over eight minutes of just pure, 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 pure rock. But the band itself, you know, um, just 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 really, 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 really awesome. Philly Art and just just Dave Hope is a rhythm section, really bring it. And I am not gonna lie, carry on my wayward son does never just just does never, never not can't and won't shouldn't ever get old to anyone. I think that song just rocks. Um, but again. You know, or who are you listening to? Is this, are you, are you, are you listening to any of these bands? You could, if not, go back and check some of them out. You know, check out Porcupine Cheery. Really, really good stuff. Um, another band that I think a lot of people, I think, pass on. And if you like, you know, Tool, you might like a little Porcupine Tree. Um, you know, another band that started in 87 with Stephen Wilson. You know, he's, he is the, the leader of the band, the, the the main man, the main the main squeeze of this band, um, you know. But you know, check them out. You know, check them out. You know, a three piece that really spreads the songs and really spreads them out. You know what I mean? Um, 11, 11 albums. Last one coming out. Closure and continuation in twenty twenty two. Check them out. Gentle Giant from the 70s. You're looking for something really, really deep? Check that out. Asia. You might want to pass on the Asia. I don't know. Super Tramp, though. You know, I don't know if they're prog. If you want to consider them prog, they're probably one of my favorite prog bands. Um, Breakfast in America is just such a great album. Crime of the Century, such a great album. Bloody Well Right. I just, 
I just like them um, so much. Um, maybe there's some some prog bands that we did not mention here tonight. I would really, really appreciate it if you can um, let us know. I mean, is Pink Floyd a prog band? I don't know. Um, some people say that they are, but are they? You know, it's 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 really tough to tell on, on some picks. You know, it, it's tough to really, really see and say what's going on. You know, it's go, going through all of these artists for this episode has, has been a really blast because, it, it, you know, it, it shows a little bit just how deep and different all the music is that we listen to. You know, Greg Lake, I've talked about the Minutemen on this show quite a bit and now i'm i'm on or yes i mean i just love it you know i love mixing it up and, and, and listening to the these different songs and these different types of music especially through through this this time of the season okay you know i think i got just this week five different parties i have to go to which honestly four of the five probably will not be playing super awesome music like the awesome music that we share here together on um the hookup on music but what we do, though, is is try to go to these places and keep talking and keep sharing. If you know if rock isn't your thing, I really appreciate you just sitting back and listening. You know that's what it's about. I would listen to anybody about any different type of music because you know building that connection is is really something that I think is, you know is awesome because it takes the stress off, especially during you know the holidays and this holiday and this holiday season. You know, everybody in the last, you know, 49 episodes that I have talked with, you know, outside of the show, um, it's just been really, really, really amazing and awesome, you know, and going forward, you know, we've got lots and lots of awesome stuff still planned. Um, we're going to go through some of the year's greatest, um, albums, you know, with, with some other people, you know, some of my fellow penguins are going to join me and we're going to, we're going to really pick out what, what some of our favorites are, you know, and that's going to be coming up pretty soon. You know, through this year, if you think about it, we've just talked about everybody from like Nine Inch Nails to, to, to Marvin Gaye to, you know, all the way, you know, to Steely Dan, just, just so many different things. Um, we, we've talked about death metal. We've talked about, you know, just, just, just punk and, and, and pop punk and just, all these different topics. And I think that is exactly why I've always wanted to do something like this is just to be able to bring anybody or somebody together to talk about the things that they love about music. I mean, um, the, this, this season, it's just, just, just been a blast, you know? Um, but today, you know, today we're here to again, honor rush Genesis and, and those bands. So please go back and listen to them. Um, check out that real estate um, album if you, um, when it comes out in February, and go back and check their old albums out. Um, that Water Underground song, just heard it this last week. It's really, really sticking with me. And I think, you know, it's it's one that, that could possibly um, stick into your, you know, brain and, and, and all of that. You know, and in, in, in closing, okay, um, everybody out there, we need to keep just, 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 just listening to music. You know, I can't say this enough. I probably have ended more shows like this than anything more, but the more we listen to music, the more we can keep just, 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 just building and building and building and supporting um, artists, you know, in the live setting in your living room on, on, on your turntables, you know, if you're, if you're um, telling people, you know, uh, just this year, you know, over, over, over 500 different songs have been shared with me that I never even heard about. And I, I think that that's really the honesty, the, uh, the, mu the musical magic the magical music that um we love to, to share together but uh everybody please have a good rest of um the week you know whatever you're doing um please relax you know please listen to some music and sit back and put your feet up and, and remember here at the hookup on music uh tony myself and, and everyone else out there you know we we 
we're glad you're here. We're glad that you keep joining us and we're glad you keep supporting everything, not only here at Hookup on Music, but at the Sadistic Penguin Studios. Um, please go to that website. It's a lot, a lot of cool articles to read. Um, please check out the other podcasts that will be coming up soon. Um, the really, 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 really things that we're working on are, are, are some, some things that I'm going to be um, just putting so much work and effort in because I love just doing this. You know, check out the new at the show podcast that will be coming out. I don't want to say new. Um, I want to say the continuation, the uh, reiteration. Um, please check out the um, drafty pod. Man, it's a lot of good times, a lot of cool stuff that they're drafting. But uh, we'll see you guys soon. My name's Tony. This is the Hookup on Music podcast, and it has been a blast. Drop that needle, everybody. Until the next time, we will talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.